back. It's another week and another whiskey on Liquid Gold TV with me, Bryony Purgy, brought to you by Brayburn. So fill your glass with something special and come and join me for a dram. We have the absolute delight of having Jerry Martins, who is the food and beverage manager of one of Hong Kong's leading hospitality clubs. And we are very lucky to have him. And we are also joined by Sam Gordon from Braeburn Whiskey. Welcome and thank you for joining. Thank right. you. Now, first off, Jeremy, um, I hear that you grew up in Troyes in France, and which is the heart of the Champagne region. Now, does this make you an expert of everyone's favorite celebratory drink? <laughs> I would not consider myself as expert. Uh, I do drink uh, a good amount of champagne uh, every year, but uh, I have some friends who know a lot, a lot more about champagne than, than I do. And you can call them in if you want the information, you can just sit back and relax. Absolutely, that's what matters. <laughs> uh, you've managed to turn a passion into an investment prospect, which is uh, whiskey. Obviously you, you love champagne clearly, and you've begun investing in whiskey. So. How long have you been investing in whiskey and what got you into investing in whiskey? So I've been uh, selling, drinking, tasting, enjoying a lot of whiskey in my life. Uh, I had a chance to, um, to, to, to have also a, a network of friends who are quite interested in whiskey. Uh, one of them once told me, hey Jeremy, what do you think about whiskey investments? Uh, what, what do you think about buying a cask? And that was quite a strange question because I was not really aware of what kind of investment it was. Um, then I, wa I was introduced to Samuel. Uh, Sam was a good gentleman, very nice, very kind, uh, explaining uh, with a lot of pedagogy what was all around uh, the, the whiskey uh, investment, whiskey cask investment. And, you know, I had the opportunity to buy your first uh, cask of uh, Lafroig. Uh, and, and that was that was quite an interesting investment. So I said, you know what? Let's let's jump on it. Let, let's just give a try. And uh, and then it became an addiction between the friends. Uh, we all started to buy uh, one here, one there. It's, it's an interesting, you know. Um, it's we, we all know that shame that, that the whiskey is aging. Um, so it it. it grows value uh, by, by, by day. So this is also something that is very interesting. We don't want to leave our money under a mattress or, uh, or under a bank that doesn't uh, grow anything. So, and, and by the way, it's a pleasure because we, we get to taste also uh, the whiskey that we purchase and, and that is quite awesome. You mentioned that your friends obviously referred you and you have, with your friends, sort of created a circle where you talk about which whiskies you've invested in, that you can enjoy them once you get to them. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about if there's ever any sort of, if there's any rivalry or if there's any sort of um, fun situations that arise out of the fact that you all invest in whiskey casks? <laughs> That's a good question, actually. I I'm not sure about rivalry, but there is some kind of secrecy sometimes, you know. Uh, they, sometimes we, we, we meet with each other, we have a, a nice drink, uh, you know, in each end, and, and, and suddenly one is telling me, hey, you know what, uh, I just bought uh, two casks of Kaolila. And we're like, oh, you didn't even talk about it before. I mean, you just done it when it's concluded, the deal is done. Um, uh, so, so that's quite funny, this kind of secrecy, of course. Uh, we discuss freely about it, but sometimes it happens just at the very end. Uh, we can also buy several within a group. Uh, you know, when it's a great deal, uh, a friend buys one, I buy one. That's something that we also do sometimes, uh, and that gives us opportunities to, to grow our portfolio, to have some good brands and also uh, some, some beautiful bottles to come. You mentioned brands and distilleries there. Do you have a particular favorite, a particular brand that you choose to invest in? And then do you have one that you prefer to drink the most? <laughs> favorite? I like I like to discover. So I, I bought recently uh, some uh, bourbon cask. Uh, I love bourbon a lot. Uh, I'm discovering a lot more uh, Scottish whiskies nowadays because of course I'm investing in it. So I have to know my stuff. No preference, I would say, but definitely uh, love discovering. Jeremy, do you plan when you invest in a cask to keep them for a short time or for a longer period and why? That's a good question. Um, I, I, see, I see myself keeping this cask on a long-term basis. I believe I have, I have a lot to earn if I was to simply keep on going with the investments rather than selling something right now. Um, so honestly, no, I don't see myself uh, selling within the next I would say minimum 
five, six, seven years for some of them. And for some others, it, it, it has to be a lot, lot uh, after that. I think what Jeremy's got is very good. I mean, you know, very young, you know, 2019 cast, Kalila. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, and then it goes kind of mid, you know, five to six year old Mortlocks, Highland Parks. And then of course you start to look at the, um, the Lefroig. So, you know, I, I mentioned this last week, diversification is very important in whiskey because Jeremy can sell some of his in five or six times, at five or six years, pardon me, as he said. Um, some of them he could sell in much longer, you know, a much longer period of time. So it's um, it's very good to have strate strategic exit points. Mm. Jeremy, you're obviously based all the way away in Hong Kong, but have you managed to visit any of your casks? So not yet. Uh, I didn't have a chance to uh, come all the way to Scotland, but that's a plan. It will be a great opportunity for me and my wife to, uh, to visit a country that we have not uh, done yet. So definitely count on me. Uh, I don't know when yet, but this, is, this will be happening for sure. Excellent. And have you had a chance to sample any of them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had a chance to uh, to have a sample of uh, my life frog, life frog sherry cask, uh, 14 years old, and, and it was quite quite nice, uh, promising, very promising. So I'm looking forward to uh, to uh, to that cask to keep on aging a bit. Um, let's see what it will be at 21 years old. You know, it's kind of a threshold of 21 years old. So uh, we'll see at that moment, but it's already promising and. Uh, and I keep the simple, you know, sometimes uh, I like to have a little taste again, just to remind uh, how great is the cask. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, um, just to add something, it's um, it's very, very special. I mean, I've taken many clients to visit their cask and really the, the expression you see on their face, it's a very special moment, you know, because especially people like Jeremy across in Hong Kong, they're so far away, you know, they mm. do struggle to come across and see the cask. So, that's always something when coming into the investment to come to terms with. So I think when you do come across Jeremy, um, you know, it's a, a very, very special experience. A very special experience. Fantastic. Jeremy Martins, food and beverage manager in Hong Kong for one of the leading clubs over there, talking about his experience of investing in Rayburn Whiskey with the wonderful Sam Gordon from Rayburn Whiskey, talking us through what that relationship Thank means. You. Thank you both so, so much for your time. And Jeremy, take Thank care. You. Have a lovely rest of your evening. Thank you very much. See you very soon. Thank take you, care. Jeremy. Thank you. Thanks. Today you can see that we have this absolute feast of Aaron Whiskies because we have Mariella Romano, Global Brand Ambassador for Aaron Whiskey, and we are also joined by Neil Brown from Brayburn Whiskey, who is a huge fan of Aaron Whiskey. So thank you both for joining me. Thank you Thank for you, the The Aaron Distilleries are an independent distillery, right? So they actually, you have a lot of freedom with what you can choose to make and how you choose to make. Can you tell me a little bit more about that, Mariella? Absolutely. Actually, when I was looking for a job, I only had three companies in mind that they were all independent. And uh, my expectations were like exactly, you know, achieved with this job. Uh, we do things, you know, the slow, good, old way, and uh, we are not looking, you know, making a billion liters of alcohol, you know, per year, but we prefer to make, you know, less than half, and but make a good quality whiskey at the end of the day. Neil, obviously we see uh, Mariella's got this gorgeous selection of Aaron whiskeys just there, but you specifically collect, well, choose to collect Aaron whiskeys. Uh, why Aaron whiskeys? It's Aaron bottles for kind of two reasons. One reason being the kind of romantic personal side that I love Aaron whiskey. I'm from that area and I love collecting it, but I see a lot of value in Aaron because Aaron is such a young distillery and whiskey terms is only 25 years of age and it's doing such amazing things right now in the whiskey world, but you can still buy relatively cheap compared to a Macallan, a Confidic or a Glenlivet. So I just see so much value in Aaron going forward. And the fact that I can buy now and hold on for many years i just see a lot of value in aaron in the future so personal and investments uh, and mariella talking about the aaron distillery there's also the newly opened lag distillery can you talk about the similarities and differences between those two when we started uh, up in locranza we didn't really want to compete uh, with Isla, we didn't want to go there, you know, we didn't want to touch the Aberdeen Islands, we didn't want to make a mysterious, you know, sexy, dark looking whiskey, we just wanted to make something uh, soft, elegant and of good quality at the end of the day. While when we opened Lag last year in 2019, um, 
we actually went full on. So we're doing heavily peated malt uh, that is uh, all the way up to 50 ppm, uh, which is quite a lot. But at the same time, we still want to imprint their iron character. So we're using uh, peat that is not coming from any coast or any island. It's actually mainland peat. So it's not going to be the most medicinal, you know, seaweedy, uh, smoky whiskey ever. It's still going to have its subtlety, uh, but with its own, you know, smoke, with its own flavor profile. With all these different styles, what's your favorite expression of the Aran range? And the quarter cask, uh, the boffy, uh, as we call it, uh, is my favorite, mostly because I like Aran whiskey um, maturated bourbon cask more than sherry cask. I think it gives more freedom to the whiskey to shine, especially to show all of its fruitiness, its waxiness, you know, its uh, sweetness as well. So bourbon cask is perfect, but when you put it into a smaller cask, we used 125 liters casks, it's even better because it's kind of like hypered uh, to another extent. But then again, it's still an iron whiskey at the end of the day. So it's mouth coating, you know, it stays with you. It's long, nice finish and, and it's so drinkable at uh, 56% because we run one of the slowest distillations in the industry. So our uh, liquid, even at a higher ABV, uh, is still, you know, quite enjoyable. Fantastic. And Neil, what would be your favourite bottle? I bought two weeks ago the Smuggler series. Oh. It's gorgeous. I just love it. Nice. It's, in the, it's in books. It's gorgeous bottling. It's really wacky. It's really cool. Uh, and I also love the 1995 single cask. Really cool bottle, decanter. Those, those are my two favourites. Absolutely. Good taste. Thank you. <laughs> the business behind Brayburn is obviously one of whiskey cask investment. Why do you think people choose to purchase a barrel of whiskey, Mariella? Not only it's an investment, uh, you know, it's a money investment, I also think that it's uh, mostly due to uh, romance. You know, there is so much romance around whiskey. It's also an, uh, a journey, it's an experience. You know, we have so many whiskey fans and so many whiskey lovers. We have our white star community, for example, of people that, um, you know, love whiskey so much that they want to purchase a, a cask. So obviously, if you look at a person's journey through the whiskey industry, they may be starting, you know, with one whiskey that was recommended by a friend or recommended by a partner, or just it happened casually in a bar that they came across a specific whiskey that made them fall in love. And the next thing you know, they're buying bottles of whiskey to share with their friends. And then the next, next thing you know, is that they want to buy a cask and be able to share it with all of their friends, you know, and their loved ones. And then maybe 10 years down the line, they'll bottle it and, uh, uh, you know, they make a profit out of it maybe but also they'll share it and they have a whole story to tell now um, i'm gonna actually ask this qu next question of both of you but i'll start by asking neil and then i'll ask uh, mariel immediately afterwards uh, in the next 25 years neil what do you see the aaron distilleries getting up to I, I just think the world's the world's at aaron's feet to be honest because looking at aaron as an investment which i specialize in doing with whiskey i think in aaron's short life it's done some amazing things. Bottle, bot, single cast bottlings, single cast releases. It's got a new distillery on the island to cater for the more peated kind of releases. So in the space of 25 years, to have two distilleries from that same island, to have the releases you have on the market, in the next 25 years when Aaron starts becoming 50 year old or even past that to 60, 70 year old, you're going to see a massive player in whiskey, I think. Fabulous. And what would you add to that, Mariella? I agree 100% with the, what Neil said, and uh, I hope that we'll stay uh, independent in the future as well. So if we keep making things right for another 25 years, I'm sure that our whiskey will become, you know, more popular as well, but obviously will grow in value. But uh, as long as the quality stays the same. Um, now you have in front of you a selection of Aran whiskies and some Aran cheeses and it would be wonderful if you'd be kind enough to talk us through a couple of pairings. First things first, I always go by flavour, so I just match the flavour profile of the whiskey. So for example, the Barrow Reserve, which is our light and fresh, you know, uh, beginning of the range, sort of, our, it's like a basic Aran bourbon cast matured only, bottled at 43%, so easier, you know, like a breakfast whiskey, as I like to say. Uh, I paired it with uh, uh, an old Riki, which is just a very nice, soft, easy, 
not peaty but like smoky just to give a, a little extra flavor and uh, they go very well together the 10 year old <laughs> instead which is a bit of a richer more sherry cask you can tell from the color it goes very well with a classic wheel of iron cheese flavored with iron whiskey so this is just you know it just combo it just goes so well together nice and creamy moving on the 18 is 100% sherry cask, so again, very lush and very sweet, but it, there's much more to it. It's, it's dark, it looks like, you know, it's going to be much drier, but actually on the palate is much softer and sweeter. Uh, so I use some Gouda. I couldn't find some Gouda, but I found another type of cheese, which is called Landana, which is literally in between Parmesan and Gouda. So what you want is like a caramelly cheese that complements, you know, a soft, creamy caramelly cheese that complements the whiskey. You've uh, just made me completely, I'm absolutely dying to have some of that whiskey and that cheese now. You've absolutely <laughs> set <laughs> Yeah, but last one, I know we could go on forever. Quarter cask, my favorite, goes very well with Mimolette. Fruity, spicy whiskey, very well with the nutty and fruity whiskey as well. Mimolette is perfect. The sherry cask is heavy and big, and it's cast strength as well, and it's first fill sherry, so all of the spices, you know, quite dry, quite woody, quite, you know, raisiny, big dried fruits. So I use another wonderful Isle of Iron cheddar whiskey, uh, which is with the raspberry infused cranberries, so it's Fruity, 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 delicious. And it comes down your sherry cask, which is perfect. Last but not least, I got some Lag New Make. Powerful, fire, powerful, powerful, fiery thing at 63.5%. Uh, that goes very well with Stilton. Smoke and blue cheese is just perfect. Like whatever you have, whatever Isla whiskey you have, or whatever smoky whiskey you have, try it with some, you know, earthy, farmy, hardy blue cheese, you know, stinky socks all the way. It's beautiful. <laughs> We've had this incredible feast of knowledge about Aaron and this feast visibly in front of us of cheese and whiskey pairings from global brand ambassador of Aaron Distilleries, Mariella Romano and Brayburn Whiskey's Neil Brown. Thank you both so, so much for your time. This has been Thank an you. absolute pleasure. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mariella. Thank no, you. No, thank you and lovely to meet you all. Thank you very much. Each week we are graced by a performance by a spectacular musical guest and this week we have Felix the Sax Cat at a very special location. cannot imagine a better way to see off another week of Liquid Gold TV than with a performance outside the very gates of Brayburn headquarters. Join me next week for another dram.